How about I go Big Red? Hello, everybody. It's John Johnston, Core Nation, and I'm here to talk to you about the Big Ten West. Now that we've kind of reached mid-season, we have a good idea what the teams look like, how they're performing, and what's going on, and we can can look forward and make a projection about who's going to win the Big Ten West and what's going to happen with the teams. And here is the Big Ten West standings over here. And you've got Wisconsin on top at 2-0. and They've only played two games. You've got Iowa at 2-1 and with a horrible loss to Penn State. And then you've got uh, the rest of everybody, which is just honestly kind of a pile of poo. That's being kind in some cases. And before we get to like what the rest of the season looks like for everybody, let's look at this and go, what are the most shocking and surprising things about this season so far? Number one, Illinois being 0-3 and 2-4 and overall. Uh, what happened to Illinois? I thought they were going to be at least a decent team, and they look completely lost, discombobulated. Other shocking thing, Minnesota. Minnesota, I thought I would have put at the top of the Big Ten West, not necessarily the winner, but one of the teams that was going to contend. And they, well, let's, they suffered the worst loss of the season so far in the Big Ten West anyway, when they lost to Northwestern. Minnesota had a lead against Northwestern going into the fourth quarter, and then they did the traditional P.J. Fleck thing of not putting any pressure on the, on the offense and running the ball so they could end the game, you know, and extend possessions and run the clock. And they sucked. They were terrible. Northwestern at 3-3 three and three overall is a shock. I didn't expect them to win a game this season. Here they beat another Big Ten West team in Minnesota. Purdue, probably about where I expected them. I think they have the best quarterback in the Big Ten West in Hudson Card. And for that reason... They may look dangerous, but there is a reason why they won't win the Big Ten West, and I'll get that to that in a little bit. Nebraska still got to figure out an offense. Their defense is playing exceptionally well, and I think they're go- have, they have a possibility of winning the Big Ten West, but a lot of things have to fall in place. Wisconsin and Iowa play this weekend. I think that whoever wins that probably has. Well, they certainly have the front row seat to the Big Ten or the you know the big best path to the Big Ten West title. When we look at schedules, upcoming schedules, I mean, Wisconsin has beat Purdue and Rutgers. I don't think Purdue's beat Wisconsin since like 1845, which is really weird. It has been since like 2003 or 2006, which is oddly dominating. But Wisconsin has Iowa, Illinois, Ohio State, Indiana, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota left. I would put give them a loss to Ohio State and Nebraska, let's say. That would leave them at 7 and 2 overall, you know, so I'll favor Nebraska in that. Is that bias? No. Matt Rule said the other day, Nebraska's head coach Matt Rule said the other day that Nebraska could beat any team on its schedule and lose to any team on its schedule. So that makes for a very exciting and chaotic rest of the season. Bipolar might fit there as well. But that's where I have Wisconsin. It's probably seven and two in the conference overall. Iowa, when you look at Iowa, they're two and one. They have a loss to Penn State. They have wins over Michigan State and Purdue. Obviously, their weakness is their offense and their quarterback, Cade McNamara, is gone for the season. What's or Iowa's defense is exceptional and wins games. Nebraska fans this year could take a cue from that that it's okay if you're winning games without an offense. It happens at Iowa all the time. Shouldn't stay that way for 23 years of your coaching regime, but I guess if it works for you, why change? Why have an offense when you can win seven or eight games a year without one? Their upcoming schedule includes Wisconsin, Minnesota, Northwestern, Rutgers, Illinois, at Nebraska, a ridiculously easy schedule. And I think it's, you know, as a Nebraska guy, I look at this and go, do they not have the easiest schedule in the world every single freaking year? Moving forward, losses to Wisconsin and Nebraska for Iowa leaves them at six and three and so far at second place. The only other team I'd say that has a shot at winning the Big Ten West is Nebraska. And the reason why I say this is 
because I think Nebraska has figured out who they are. They've figured out that they don't have the best offense in the world, but they do have a very good defense. And I think they can ride that the rest of the way. And if they can eliminate the turnovers, they can win, like guys, well, Matt Rule said, they can win all the rest of their games. Do I think that's going to happen? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I mean, I'm not that much of a homer. Schedule ahead for Nebraska includes Northwestern by week this week, then Northwestern, Purdue, Michigan State, Maryland, Wisconsin, and Iowa. I have losses to Maryland and Wisconsin, which leaves Nebraska at five and four, which is kind of weird because I said Wisconsin would lose to Nebraska either, which means I'm kind of waffling on my notes a little bit. <laughs> In any case, I, I think that Nebraska is going to suffer some losses. Um, everybody else, Everybody, I don't think Nebraska will win the Big Ten West, but I do think we'll go to a bowl game because we certainly have the team, considering our opposition of poo, uh, that we can beat for the rest of the season. Minnesota, you know, probably the biggest disappointment for, for Nebraska is that Minnesota loss because Minnesota does not look like a team that's very good. I think they were going to rely more on their passing game this year, and Ethan K has not played well whatsoever. Their defense hasn't been, well, it's been underwhelming. And they're, I don't see them really, they're going to get to a bowl game, but I don't really see them making any waves much. Purdue, I said earlier that I thought they might have had a chance to uh, be one of the surprise teams in the Big Ten West. But when you look at their upcoming schedule, they play Ohio State at Nebraska, Michigan, Minnesota, Northwestern, Indiana. It's an easy schedule unless you consider that they play Ohio State and Michigan because I don't think they're beating them. But I, I do like Purdue's offense. I do think that they're going to have a decent season considering their first-year head coach, Ryan Walters. And then, of course, we get to Illinois at the bottom of the conference. And again, what the hell happened to Illinois? They uh, just look terrible. They look lost. They look lost on offense, like they can't run the ball. Their defense looks lost, like they can't defend the pass. And uh, it's terrible all around for them. So the rest of the season, I would say Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska in the top three. Then a big, glommy bunch of poo at the bottom. Notice I didn't include Nebraska in that because I might be biased. But... Nebraska could easily fall to the bottom of that if they continue the turnover problem. So that's what I've got for the Big Ten West right now. I thought I'd do a quick assessment at midseason. Uh, thank you for your support so far on this channel. Please tell your friends. Hit the notification bell on the channel so you get notified when I put out new videos. Thank you again for the support, and go Big Red.